Hello, it is a pleasure to introduce myself to you today. I'm Cheryl Michette Dorskin, and I teach five classes here at BPSOP. I teach all about color, more about color, photographing children naturally, painting photos, and the art of self-portraiture. In addition to teaching these five courses, I teach photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, portfolio development at the college level. I've written three books. I'm a fine art photographer, a portrait photographer, photojournalist, and I, I think a lot more. A fine art mentor, how could I forget to mention that? Um, so take a look at my website and there's lots of information on what I do and how to contact me. And if you're interested in one of my courses at BPSOP, please um, don't hesitate to reach out and email me. And without further ado, let's jump into the critiques. This is Rick Federico's picture um, called Into the Great Wide Open. His goal was to have us have a sense of us dropping off into the wild blue sky yonder. And um, that's what appeals to him most in this image. And he is wondering if that we feel the same. And, and I, I feel like that's a stairway to heaven and beyond. And I think personally, you, you nailed it on that aspect. And it's a great thing to put in your critiques, what it is you're trying to achieve. Because you know, critiques in the end are, are very subjective. So if I know objectively what you are after, I think it's more critical for me to address that. Um, you shot this with a 5D Mark II, 70 to 300 millimeter lens, an L lens. At You used the 70 millimeter portion, F8 at 1 500th of a second, ISO 400. Technically, you could have closed down a bit. I would have done this shot at F16, closed down two stops. Then your shutter would have opened two stops to 1 1250 of, of a second. And you could have even opened, uh, you know, slowed down your ISO. And then everything would have changed in, in accordingly. But um, the shot is great. The exposure looks right on. What it does bother me is this looks red to me. So let's bring your picture into Photoshop. And normally I ask my students what programs they work in post-processing so that I can discuss their pictures in that platform. And then of course there's some students that, that want to sh shoot straight out of the camera. And if that's you, you should have adjusted your white balance to, um, I would have done sun. So anyway, here we are in your picture, and and really the goal in Photoshop is to tweak the picture. You know, you want to spend 10, 15 minutes on a picture. Otherwise, I don't think you got the exposure right. So that's my that's how I use my criteria. There's always some tweaking that needs to be done. So to adjust this color, I probably would have adjusted it in RAW to begin with, but since we're here, I would do, um, actually I clicked hue saturation, but I think I would do color balance instead. Let me minimize that. And I would just tweak this. I'd pull away from the red, pull away from the red again, pull away from the red again, and see, can you see how that already works better? And you know, you don't want to get it too green, you don't want to get it too too much the other way, but um, I think that's much, much better. I always like to use adjustment layers because they're non-destructive. But typically the workflow I recommend is levels, curves, and vibrance. If you can do those three, then you got a great exposure. So I'll move the white slider into where your clouds are. I'll bring this down. And actually, I'll bring it over a little to the left because I want to open up these steps and maybe a little bit more. And then I'll open them up even more in curves. 
Not there, but maybe over here. There they go. So curves is pretty cool. And um, I think you're done. I mean, maybe vibrance, since I always usually add vibrance and vibrance. I use instead of saturation, it's, it's, um, it's a more forgiving edit. And then the one other thing I would like to mention to you is to consider this in black and white. And um, and then there's all these wonderful choices. Let's do like maximum black. However, the blues in your picture um, help create that dropping off feeling that was your objective. So... I'd say for your goals, this is the picture, color balanced a little better. I love that you have the um, reflections here in the metal. And this is a great shot, just need a little tweaking. Thanks so much. Here we have a photo by Sandy Souza. There's a party going on and I love this sense of humor and, and finding, um, beauty in nature and, and humor in nature, very clever. And you say that, um, at first you might think oh, there's nothing to shoot, but your lens will drift and your eye will finally see and click, 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 I'll shoot for hours. And that reminds me of a, a famous quote by Gary Winogrand, who is an iconic, who was an iconic um, street photographer who said he liked to photograph to see what things would look like when a photograph and it's really the same kind of thing you were saying so hats off to you for your creative energy and keep keep letting that lens move around so let's take this into photoshop and um actually let's take it into lightroom and and um and here we have these people partying i love it uh, so what I would say is that you chose to put this into a sepia tone and I think black and white would have been better. Um, it would have been more classic and you could have highlighted the um, highlights and shadows more. And um, because the brown has, has sets a tone. It's more nostalgic it's more laid back it's more tempered brown represents uh, trustworthiness um, I don't think it adds to the party atmosphere but that said if you didn't want to go to black and white you could go back to color and just you know go crazy with the reds you know party party with the reds red is a color of passion and um i don't know if i can get this red with what i have to work with but um that's what i would have done there we go i mean the brown was prettier it's a prettier picture but i don't think it represents partying and the red is not the same whereas black and white I think you would have nailed your shot so keep on letting that lens explore your world and thank you for participating the next photo we'll take a look at is from Michelle Fodrini and she photographed her niece and had a great time and invaluable practice working with her well let's take this into um, Lightroom and have a look. I can see you used a narrow aperture, I mean a wide aperture, because this is nicely blurred, whereas you have her face in sharp focus. Uh, her flesh tone looks beautiful, just uh, peaches and cream, cream complexion. Um, let's see, you have a warm, cool color scheme working that that works nicely my eye goes to this ring i i you know if this was my client i i'd ask her if if it's okay if we got rid of that ring 
This one's okay. It just sort of goes with the flow. And talking about flow, this is a nice S-curve going on. Although the inside of her hand is, um, I think, not the best way to pose hands. Hands are always really tricky. And and uh, for a good way to get some ideas is go to like Getty.com and look at portraits of hands and, and see what makes sense. I think maybe if you turned this the other way, it might have been nicer if you put this hand over on the wall. Maybe instead of having her, uh, you know, maybe turn the, the chest a little and break, make this a little more feminine. I think, you know, to go with her hair and this nice flow you have going on here and you have a flow here. So get her body to move more. The, uh, her beautiful blue eyes, I think would look better if you um, had her looking at you or looking over here, looking somewhere. Right here they look misdirected. And um, you know, there's too much white. So think about where the eyes are going. Eyes are said to be the soul of the picture. So, you know, think about what the eyes are saying and, and have them emote, like ask her a question, get her to get her to say something with those eyes. And they are beautiful eyes. The hands, aside from the eyes, are, are said to be the most um, revealing aspects of a portrait. So, I mean, if you're a palm reader, then then her lines of her hands might be interesting. But I think, I think something could have been done differently there. Her hair, like I said, looks beautiful. Um, I think a lot about colors in my wardrobe and. This scarf does work with this this colored background, but it might be a bit much. So that's something I suggest you rethink. Uh, it might be nice to see see her neck. She looks young. I bet she has a pretty neck. Now talking about um, other elements of the picture, the eye moves to the lightest part of the picture. This is the lightest. Then we move up to this little triangle of color. So I don't think it's important to see the sky there. So maybe we can crop right there. And I think that makes a lot of difference. And uh, otherwise, I think your exposure is, is really quite nice. Your white balance is right on. I'll just darken the exposure by 0.3 which adds like a vignette. Again, I would get rid of that ring. Notice how we go right over there. Um, but otherwise, I think this is really good. I'd like to see more pictures from the out shoot. I, I have a feeling you have some other winners. She's a beautiful girl, and thank you for participating. Let's look at the picture from Valerie Anna Della Langa called Broken Pier, and it's what remains of a broken pier in the ocean, shot at dawn. And this has a very um, distinct atmospheric feel to it. it um, it's a warm, cool picture, warm being the pink, blue being the cool, which is a very, very popular color motif because people are either, they either prefer cold, images, cool colors, or warm colors. So warm, cool pre presents them both to us. Uh, since I don't have any other data, I'll bring it into Lightroom, and we'll talk about it there. Now, through these critiques, I've been mentioning that our eye moves to the lightest of colors. So my eye goes right there to the motorboat, and it is um, out of focus which is probably because you used a relatively slow shutter, which I can see by the, the um, exaggerated movement of texture in the water. It's quite lovely though. So this is good. So all my input for everyone, in fact, is just making it better. So to, to sharpen up that boat, I'll just increase clarity to 40 
which works for this image as a whole. And I will bring up the vibrance. Vibrance is something I'll always bring up anyway. And I think I'll take down your exposure. So I bring us back to Dawn that you, you were capturing this picture at. And then the highlights, I'll bring down too, just a little. So I keep those pink tones. And then they, they um, echo into the water, which is quite, quite lovely. Uh, this goes dark down here on the left foreground. So let's bring up those shadows, maybe, maybe just 10%. Oh, well, I did a lot longer than that. Um, I think just 15%. How about that? Um, so now I'm working with ambiance. I'm trying to create that feeling of pre-dawn, which is a play on color and darkness and shadows. And um, this is a winning picture. Notice how just those changes help things along. Now let's just see if we add a little more of the red and the purple and magenta, if we can really make this work. So here's the before and after. You tell me which one you liked better. Um, this is a great photo, though. Great uh, perspective you have. You know, some people might say, well, that shouldn't be in the middle, but I think this all leads there. And um, you have this play on blue and pink, so blue recedes. It pulls us back further, but the pink comes forward, and you have the pink going all through this. So it's quite lovely. Thank you for such a great job. And here's a photo by Donald Craze. Early morning flower, 5D Mark II, 24, 105 millimeter. He shot it at F19 with a spot metering um, mode, one eighth of a second on ISO 1000. Um, you grab the shot. I guess you also grabbed it with a tripod, good for you. And um, I love your little story about how you went from the air-conditioned room out into the Houston hot and muggy day. Um, I think a lot of us on the East Coast also can totally relate to that. You worked this in Photoshop with tweaking contrast, color enhancement, spot removal. There was lots of pollen. Um, so I'll bring it into Photoshop to have a further conversation, too. And while this is loading, um, I will say it's always good for all the students, well, at least my students, um, to give as much information in the captions as possible, because um, the more information I have, the more I can, um, you know, fine tune my critiques to you. I like the position of the Orla Orlandia flower. It's, um, it's quite graceful. And um, what I will say is, um, because the title is um, Early Morning Flower, I did want to bring in um, this piece of knowledge uh, to show you what the colors of light are at different times of day. So early sunrise is, is really more of an orange and yours, your picture is, is, is more of a red. So that's what struck me at first. Like the red is, is really pretty. But it doesn't, it doesn't make me think of early morning. So um, let's bring a little more early morning into this picture by uh, tweaking, tweaking this color to get, um, I want to get over here a little. So, you know, in Photoshop, there's many ways to do the same thing. But to be quick, let's just Let's just tweak our hue saturation. So I went to 12. You can also 
tweak the uh, the reds. So that's there you are with the color. And then I would just run through a couple of the adjustments, levels, curves, and vibrance. Those are my three go-tos. And I love how you have this um, green here. It's just green is the complement of, of red, but I mean, we switched it a little to orange, but I really like that. And then let's go into curves and see if we could just pop it a little. So pretty. I love the um, I love the uh, rhythm of this whole thing. It's just quite beautiful. I always work with adjustment layers, and uh, here's the last one. I would do a vibrance, and I think you have a winner. Let me just show you the before and afters. So that's before. It's a beautiful red. Don't get me wrong, but it just to me doesn't speak of early morning. So maybe change the title if you love that, or or um, actually this is looking a little too orange. So let's bring it down. Let's bring it down. No, that's not how I want to bring it down. Let's bring it down there. Anyway, great photo. And um, thanks for participating.